Hi, I'm Danny, uh, and this is Paul. We are from the Render Labs team. Uh, we are going to do a little overview of what uh, R Render Labs is uh, and what resources we can provide. Um, and then we're going to be uh, doing a little uh, uh, demo from uh, Mike from uh, Think Agents about uh, what they've created kind of with some of these new tools. And then we'll open it up for uh, uh, Q&A uh, right after that. Um, so. Uh, Render Labs is your resource for the best AI tools and agentic workflows. That's kind of uh, what we're what we're working on right now. AI powered tools are flooding our industry faster than ever. How can motion graphics artists navigate this new reality? Render Labs is your resource for discovering, evaluating, and integrating these emerging technologies into your workflows. Every week, new AI models and tools emerge, promising revolutionary results. But which tools truly deliver? Which fit your projects? Which integrate best into your workflows? Uh, at Render Labs, we get early access to the latest tools. We have we, we, re <laughs> we rigorously evaluate them, benchmark performance, and identify the best solutions for your specific projects. Uh, beyond that, we also create the integrations, the agents that seamlessly connect these systems into your creative workflow and bring them onto the render network. We don't just recommend tools, though. We put them through rigorous testing. Here's some example testing of uh, some generative tools like Pika, Runway, Kling, and Sora, um, where we're comparing quality, speed, accuracy, and, uh, and ease of integration. Um, We've also got some cool tools here. Uh, uh, I think Jules showed off some of uh, this as well. Here's some uh, cool examples of 2D to 3D tools, um, as well as text to 3D uh, from uh, Tripo's uh, newest model. Um, and we can uh, we test these types of uh, tools against uh, other models like uh, Katem 3D, Meshi, and whatever else is uh, you know kind of coming out at these rapid rapid paces. Um, some of the coolest new processes, I uh, 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 think Jules showed some of this this morning too, are these tools like uh, Blender MCP, which allows artists to input prompts directly into Claude, and uh, it connects to actually fully control uh, modeling in Blender. Um, these are you know, just the kind of coolest new things that are, that are coming out and changing how uh, these workflows are uh, going to just rapidly change everything we're working on. Our goal is to rapidly test these new innovations and provide you unbiased, practical insights so you spend less time experimenting and more time creating. Um, our opening video was all produced by Runway, one of the leading generative video platforms, which is great for quick visualizations, concept art, and uh, rapid iteration. Um, here we see an example from uh, Wonder Dynamics, which excels at auto integrating into uh, animated characters into live action. Um, this dramatically reduces tedious rigor, uh, rigging and uh, animation work. Um, the true power comes when all these tools integrate seamlessly, in our first experiments, Render Labs is building intelligent, agentic workflows and integrations that connect these tools effortlessly. Whether you're a solo creator or a studio, our integration layers will let you assemble AI-driven workflows quickly, efficiently, and reliably so you can focus purely on creativity. Uh, there's uh, some flyers out here um, uh, for you guys to check out um, as we will continue to add more tools to render.x.io, uh, which is our playground to test out the latest uh, models and, and tools on the render network. Uh, we're also working on a project called Renderector, uh, which is a powerful, cohesive platform where a single creator or small teams can leverage all of these best-in-class AI tools seamlessly in one environment. Renderector will amplify your creativity, placing extraordinary storytelling power into the hands of individual artists. Render Labs is your trusted guide through this rapidly evolving landscape of AI tools and workflows. We evaluate, integrate, and empower, ensuring you always have the right tools for the job. We truly want to partner 
on this endeavor with you. Um, and so whatever you guys are working on, if you've got new uh, uh, tools, systems, things that you're uh, investigating, wanting us to integrate with, that is our role um, here uh, with uh, Render Lab. So please reach out and uh, um, yeah, uh, excited to work with you guys on, on all of these projects. Um, we're gonna uh, cut to black for a second. Mike's gonna uh, do uh, a, a quick demo of uh, some uh, interesting uh, agentic uh, uh, work that, that he's working on, then we'll uh, jump into uh, Q&A. Are you good? Right. Cool. So I have loved watching Render grow over these years, and um, I've been working in AI since 2017. We built the first ML Ops platform that like, the United Nations used for their global data program, Nike, Toyota, Merck, the British Office of Statistics. And we've been, um, we've been working in Web3 for about a year and a half now, solving some of these problems. And what I'm going to show you right now is a client. And uh, if you're paying attention at all right now, there's Cursor, Windsurf. There's all these developer-focused clients that are coming out. And what you're seeing here is a super early alpha, internal alpha. So don't judge the UI, because we basically have two code sets right now. Uh, people will start seeing the real thing uh, shortly. But what you're seeing is a self-hosted client on a machine. Uh, you can run full inference on this machine, or you can call out to Render Network, Venice, any others. Um, and the whole thing is tokenized. So every agent actually has an on-chain token that acts as your authentication, um, verification, and auth layer. And so um, we'll show you this one first, and then I'm up here soon on, on another one. So this is, this is taking all of these tools and plugging them into an interface that you can use on your machine. Uh, we're working with MeBits right now, so they have 3D renders of all of their characters. So now your agent actually becomes a 3D character that's an NFT that you own. Um, here you're just seeing it. Uh, I think it's calling Venice right now, and it's generating some images. So we're, we're really just demoing that like you have one place here where all the pieces click together. Inference, image generation, 3D models. You have a, a creative desk for everything that you're doing. And so um, this was literally just us showing uh, where it's at yesterday. Um, and like the, the agent can be aware of the images that are on board. Um, there's a creative side panel here uh, that we're gonna start to expose so your agent can actually see the thing you're working on while you're doing it. Um, and the whole point here is to bring uh, security and tokenization so that you own your keys, you own your compute, you own your data. Because right now, my guess is most people make their money with their brain here, right? Uh, you may not be thinking about it, but when you're using a Web2 tool, um, they're logging every keystroke, they're logging exactly how you work and you do your job, and they're training models based off of this. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that individuals have the ability to own all of those things and be the ones that see the value from it. Um, and so this is, uh, you know, this was just an example of where it's at, uh, and this will be launching in, uh, I believe it'll be about six weeks that we actually have a public uh, alpha available. Um, there's a pre-sale going on for kind of all the Web3 folks that are that are in this world. So the protocol is called Think, and Think is all about tokenizing the agents. And then there's a, a consumer prosumer tool on top called Souls, S-O-U dot L-S. So that's what we're building. And it's great to work with the, with the labs team here. Hi, I'm Paul with the labs team. And uh, yeah, this is a great example of the kind of nice glue that we're trying to build at labs between the core render network and the power of using the GPUs on render and agentic workflows and agentic tools. And so, um, yeah, I mean, think of labs as like this nice bridge that helps that last mile of making the tools really useful and really accessible. Uh, as you know, things continue to move very, very quickly, we all need uh, you know, help uh, making it as useful as possible in our, in our workflows that already exist. And so, yeah, happy to take some questions about that or uh, hear what your thoughts are on this, in this area. Thanks for all the information. Uh, can you define what you mean by agent? And like, is this platform just more personable than say plugging into the API of one of these AI providers? Or like, how does this work for you? So you're asking about this product right here. Yeah, I guess it, okay. agents throughout you know what? all gonna, the different layers here. I'm gonna be showing this again, like there's a video and kind of the next, cause I'm in back to back sessions. Um, but think about it as being a central hub that you actually own. Because if you're in OpenAI, they control your data, they train off your data, um, they own your agents. And when we're talking about an agent, we're basically saying like a smart application of some sort, right? Um, this is all on my machine right here. Um, and so in one place, like I can pull up all the different 
models that I go to, right? And like we're working with Render to get a whole long tail of, of those kind of models in place. You can also have all your own data. So we've got all these knowledge collections that we can start bringing in. So like here's a render expert that I've got loaded right now that's trained off of, basically has access to all the data on the website, things like that. Um, and I can have these different agents that right now just look like file folders because we're building the UI on top of this. But it's basically a way of instead of this thing being on somebody else's server, bringing everything, all the power to your desktop and giving you all the composability to put the pieces together. You want to use a really big model? You can. You want to do the model locally? You can. You want to bring in your data and never have it hit somebody else's servers? That happens here. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. All right, congratulations for the alpha. Uh, what type of features are you guys thinking for the future yeah. for an eventual uh, update? Yeah, so uh, we have MCP fully included here. So we've been building standards. I don't know if you've heard of the word MCP, but in kind of the last, I don't know, eight weeks, it's become like everyone's talking about it. And it's essentially a way to take an API and then wrap it so that an agent can use it without additional instructions. So we've been working with about 70 companies through the Independent AI Institute that we started um, to be able to create standards over about the last nine, 10 months. Um, and so there's, uh, there's a list of MCPs already that are in the many thousands that are available through Web2. What we're starting to do is we're innovating with, with the Web3 groups to be able to have uh, like, like key generation happen agent to agent so a human doesn't even need to be in the loop. So wow. we can create an API key pair and we're doing this with Venice already. Um, they pass the key to our agent, and then our agent can actually pay on chain as well. So we're abstracting away kind of all of the complications that uh, a normal user would have trying to get these developer tools working for themselves. And so we think that right now, like in terms of the adoption curve, if you think about it, like we're like right here with super early adopters that are actually building uh, workflows for their business. Almost everybody is just using like ChatGPT for like generating an image of themselves or something like that, right? But as more and more of our work comes on and we start bringing these, this next part of the, the early mid-market, like they're going to need these kind of tools. And if we go do that on Sam's computers, rent's going up at all the time, right? Like, and he's either going to be making money off of it by monetizing your data and training and giving you ads, or he's going to make money by you know, going from 200 to $2,000 a month for your bill. Hmm. Well, that's amazing. Uh, last question. Uh, are you guys going to release an MVP like or are you uh, still working on it? Yeah, so like um, a week from today, there's actually a sale that's happening where people can go buy these Think Agents. Um, it will have kind of all the tokens in it to make it work. And then we'll have pairs, like token pairs set up so that as you work with Render or any of these other tools, the user doesn't even have to think about like going in and using wallets to, to move things around. Like it can all happen behind the scenes. Yeah, so next Tuesday is a big day for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi, you mentioned um, a tool you're building called Renderector. Is yeah. that some kind? Of, um, and if I understood that correctly, it's aggregating different generative AI tools um, and creating a new UX where you can then combine different features from the different tools. Uh, is that going to be like a standalone app, or is that just something that's integrated into Octane? Yeah, uh, you know, we're thinking pretty broadly about that right now and exploring how that can best be utilized and exploring what those new workflows may look like. And so we don't know exactly what will be delivered to the market or delivered open source, but we want to, you know, share what we're learning, what we're seeing, all the little pieces we're building that make that agentic workflow that a director would do uh, work on top of the render network. We want to be giving those pieces away so that people can use those up use those and utilize those in their workflows. And so as we're all ad adapting to new workflows with ML generation underneath them, you know, all the kind of glue that connects those wor ex our existing workflows with the render network, we want to make that available and easy for people to pick up. And so exactly which pieces we release and which order, uh, still TBD, you know, it's moving so quickly still that, you know, we're still learning a lot and we're hopefully sharing a lot of those learnings with our network as well. So. And, and the, one of the things that's going to be cool is as that comes out, you're going to be able to come into these MCP tools. And like right now there's like, we've got like 20 or something like that. But literally all it takes is like a handful of lines of code and a key. And so it, like the day that they release anything, 
it's going to be fully available to everybody. And that's what makes composability so important here is that it actually creates like this free market of interoperable systems. Hi, Don. Um, I was just curious if Render Labs is looking into uh, setting up an MCP server also. Yeah, I mean, we certainly have a bunch internally that we've been using for the experimentation at different layers of the agentic stack. And, um, you know, we, we continue to think about, like, you know, we have the, the core rendering service on Blender and others that are available. And, you know, as we make GPUs on the render network available, uh, you know, do we continue to, you know, provide higher level moderate model APIs? And then do we go up from there to model, like, agentic model APIs? And uh, yeah, including sort of MCP servers that may have access throughout that stack. And like you know, Mike was saying, the goal should be that you know when you want to spin up some new tool into your environment, it's just a few clicks or it's just an instruction that adds that capability. It's not a big, long setup. It should be like a nice, coherent ecosystem that makes you as productive as possible, as creative as possible, allows you to like, as a you know a creative individual, explore the space, try even more different variants to really get your creative vision to come out. So, right. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Hi. Um, I thought all of that was really great, and I'm very excited to try it out. But I do have a question. Um, so being that it's based on an NPC and it not being connected completely to an underlying AI, what are the limitations that you may come into as you kind of do the learning portion of it? Um, is it just limited to what the AI that it's based on already learns, or is it like it will still just learn what you're working on and kind of understand that and grow with it, or what, what can we expect? Yeah, so learning happens at a bunch of different layers of the stack, right? There's AI models that those get trained all the time, right? And so um, those just get plugged in here, and it, as there's a new model from Venice or Render or, you know, there's a, a bunch of folks that are doing different takes on that, um, it just plugs in so you can like learn in real time with kind of the broader ecosystem. Okay. But then you yourself, all of your data that you give it access to, like right here, I can come in here and I can actually say, all right, I want to, uh, these Apple tools, I actually want to come in here and turn this on. And uh, now I'm going to have access to all my messages, my notes, my contacts, my emails, my reminders. So it actually uses your existing systems that at a system level you have. And so it's learning based on your real life. Yeah, I, I mean, I, would, I agree. It's just in, incredible, like, recently how many different layers that learning is starting to occur at. I mean, uh, you know, we're starting to experiment with models and render labs where, like, it's doing test time learning. And so you're, like, moving beyond even fine-tuning of models to really interactive learning that happens all throughout the stack and through MCP and other, you know, channels, touches your data ecosystem. And so, you know, as a creative, you have all these assets, potentially, or all these, like, storyboards, scripts, et cetera. And, you know, the, agent, the exciting part about the agentic workflow on top of render is like, you know, touching all of these resources and being very, very creative, but still having this expressive power to direct like, you know, your vision into the, the final output. So, yeah, that's, that's what's exciting us today. Yeah. Very cool. Um, great job on Alpha. A quick question on the um, uh, AI learning side of this. Is that any of that learning tokenized? Um, and like each of the agents have their own wallets. And then is that custodial, non-custodial? How does that key management part works? Correct. Um, so there is a, um, I'm trying to remember the exact tool that the engineering team using, but it's like a, it's a non-custodial. So you basically have, you've got your wallet that has the NFT in it, then the agent has their own wallet. Um, and the agent itself uh, has access, like has, certain permissions based on the primary wallet. So there's a two wallet system for managing auth. Got it, got it. And then the any of the learning part, is that tokenized like the pipelines and stuff? Um, tokenized meaning on chain? On chain, yeah. So for example, if my model learns from another model or from another data set or information, um, is that tokenized in any shape or form? Yeah, so um, Think Agents is not providing the underlying infrastructure. We're providing the tools for the renders and you know all the other uh, groups to be able to plug in. Right. So the learning is off chain. The well, some some are doing learning on chain, 
but some aren't. I see. Great work. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Happy to chat afterwards. Yeah. Thanks, y'all.